Hey there, Soraya Bastion here, and you are watching Beyond Red TV. The place to be to overcome your husband's infidelity and create a beautiful marriage. I was speaking once a potential client the other day on the phone, and she told me that she and her husband had just graduated their fourth therapist in the three years they'd been working to heal their marriage after her husband's infidelity. She said she felt so confused as the therapist told them, you're good now. It seems everything is all right, and I don't have anything else I can offer you. She felt like she was supposed to be happy, like, phew, we made it. But truthfully, she was panicking because they weren't okay at all. You see, although she'd participated in individual therapy for years, doing EMDR, CBT, ART, neurofeedback, and the list goes on, and they'd done couples counseling where she learned the details of his childhood trauma, and how the infidelity was brought on, she was still suffering with unstable emotions. She found herself at times experiencing worry, anxiety, and insecurity. And then times when she would feel like her soul. Sometimes she felt like they were making progress, but then she would be caught in the ruminating of intrusive thoughts, questioning everything all over again. She felt like she was driving him crazy with her need for validation and her desire to want to talk about her feelings and thoughts and rehash all the details. And she still compared herself to every other woman, saying that she could never be as fun, exciting, sexy, or interesting as an affair partner. She still thought she'll never be good enough. She was telling me that she didn't know what to do now that she graduated therapy because this was not the marriage she wanted and she did not want to spend another year feeling the way she did. So if you're here listening to this, maybe the story sounds familiar or maybe you are still on the search for a therapist that's the right fit. But today I want to tell you two reasons why therapy may not be working for you after your husband's infidelity. Number one, therapy helps you unravel your past but doesn't give you the skills to build a future. If you've done your time in therapy, I'm sure you very well know that there is a lot of processing of what has happened and how you got to this place, usually beginning in your childhood. A lot of understanding and comprehension can come from this information, but the problem is knowing that information doesn't help with changing your future. And if you continue to live with the same reactions, beliefs, and triggers that you did prior to the affair, then your relationship isn't going to change and you will only continue to repeat the past. One of my clients, Sandy, said she and her husband were working so hard to make their marriage work after his infidelity. They had both been going to therapy for years, but they kept hurting each other, even though that's the last thing they wanted to do because they didn't know how to move beyond the affair. The second thing I want to share with you today is that therapy doesn't heal emotional trauma. Emotional trauma is defined as the end result of events or experiences that leave us feeling deeply unsafe and often helpless. It can result from a single event or be part of an ongoing experience, such as chronic abuse, bullying, discrimination, or humiliation. Emotional trauma affects three parts of your brain that are also affected when one experiences a traumatic brain injury, or TBI, your prefrontal cortex, amygdala, and hippocampus. Your prefrontal cortex plays a central role in your cognitive control functions. Cognitive control refers to the intentional selection of thoughts, emotions, and behaviors based on current task demands and social context, and your ability to withstand the temptation of inappropriate habitual actions, thereby influencing attention, impulse inhibition, perspective memory, and cognitive flexibility. Let's put that into English, all right? In essence, your prefrontal cortex is responsible for your ability to switch between thinking about two different concepts, to be able to choose different emotions, to be able to stay civilized and act and behave in a way that represents who you are. However, when you experience emotional trauma, it's almost impossible to think about anything but the infidelity. It's always in the back of your mind. Sadness underlies every emotion and the sky just isn't as blue and staying civilized and maintaining composure don't worry we've all acted in ways we're not proud of 
Your amygdala is responsible for the detection of threat so that you can appropriately respond with fear-related behavior to threatening or dangerous stimuli. When affected by emotional trauma, however, the amygdala becomes hyperactive. Those who suffer emotional trauma on the brain often fear traumatic stressors more than others. This means that you're easily triggered, thus creating confusion as to when you are in danger or when you're not. Finally, the hippocampus participates in the three necessary stages in the learning and memory phase. Encoding, which is the initial learning of information. Storage, which is your maintaining information over time. And retrieval, which is your ability to pull out information when you need it. As I'm sure you've experienced when affected in this way, you have trouble telling the difference between the past and present, which leads to your avoidance of situations that remind you of the trauma, as well as your ability to understand information and know how to process it. I'm sure at this point, like we've talked about, through your recovery, you've done everything you can to understand the whys, hows, wheres, and whats of what happened, but unsure of what to do with all this information. Therapy doesn't work after infidelity until your emotional trauma is cleared. By clearing your emotional trauma, you can reset your biological stress response. Unfortunately, most women participate in therapy first. They're just doing what Google has said to do, but they end up throwing in the towel of their marriage early because they just can't get past the images and the replays and the fears. So if you've been diligent in your therapy sessions and have graduated and still find yourself Hang on, how is this? You're not alone. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Have you participated in therapy or have graduated from it and still find yourself experiencing flashbacks, insecurity, and fear? Tell me in the comments below, how does that make you feel? And be sure to head over to SorayaBastion.com and subscribe to become a Beyond Breath Insider. You'll gain instant access to an awesome training where I share the secrets to creating a marriage full of passion, intimacy and excitement after your husband's infidelity, as well as some exclusive content, some special giveaways and personal updates from me that I don't share anywhere else. Thank you for joining me today. I love you. Bye-bye.